live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to Moscone North at IBM Think 2019. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host for this segment is Dave Vellante. Happy to welcome two IBMers from the Z Group. Uh, we have Michael Jordan, a distinguished engineer. Uh, not, you, you, everybody in your family, I'm sure, calls you the Michael Jordan. No, uh, the, not, not, no not, the, not the other one. Uh, and, I won't uh, get into what they call Rohit Padlani, <laughs> who's a director of IBM Z as a service. So Rohit, we, we, have, we have to start there. We are very familiar with Z, uh, you know, all the different pieces of it, but Z as a service, something new for this week, maybe help explain what the news is and what, how that fits. So um, my mission in life is around Z and cloud. Um, and this week you heard Ginny talk about HyperProtect, and HyperProtect is a family of services built in our IBM cloud on our cloud-ready systems, which are the ZR1 systems in a multi-zone form factor, so it provides the high availability disaster recovery. And there are really four key services that we're announcing at this conference. One's around crypto and key management, provides the highest levels of security for our cloud. The second's around data as a service, which does traditionally really well on the platform, as a data serving platform. The third's virtual servers, and the fourth's containers that's going to be tied into our Kubernetes service. So we're bringing the breadth of our Z to our cloud. Yeah, uh, you know, Michael, it's, you know, I show my age in the industry. Is <laughs> I remember when we talked about security was, you know, lock the door on that rack that was in, or, uh, you know, that mainframe that sat in the corner, we knew that that was secure. It's a little bit different when we talk about security in Z these days. It's cloud, it's global, it's sure. all over the place, so. Well, but I, in fairness, right, yeah. I mean, Rack F was the gold standard of security, you know, before all this distributed system stuff. You knew, you had full visibility mm -hmm. on who did what, when, where, mm -hmm. you know, very, very detailed. Um, have you been able to carry that level of transparency and rigor into the cloud? Yeah, so some of this is, you know, what's, what's old is new again. So one of the key areas that is a big focus for security in the cloud is encryption, right? You know, encryption is going to be a central part of being able to move data to the cloud, and you know, the concepts of being able to bring your own key um, is, is absolutely essential. And some of the, the capabilities that we've had on the Z platform for a very long time actually lend themselves extremely well to uh, you know, a cloud environment. So for example, um, you know, our, our crypto, cryptographic hardware can be virtualized, right? So each server um, can have you know, 16 cryptographic cards with 85 you know, virtual domains per card. So you mul multiply that out, it, it it's, you know, really serves at cloud scale very well. And in addition to that, the, the cryptographic hardware is designed and um, to meet the highest level of you know, security certification standards. So you know, combination of, of security uh, and, and that virtualization really lend itself to you know, offering a set of cloud services. If I think about the workloads that are running on Z, um, you know, clearly there's no business case to move them off Z into you know, some commodity cloud. That would make no sense. You'd, you'd, you'd put your business at risk if you, if mm -hmm. you did that. But what's the business case of of, of HyperProtect and Z as a service. Can you talk about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so you know, today our focus is primarily to elevate the secure to our core in our cloud. If you look at what we're doing, it's around our Linux systems, they're not our traditional ZOS systems, and we're really focusing on where Z differentiates. It's around, you know, key, you know, Mike talked about key management and key protection. It's around data protection, it's around scale. So the workloads, to your point, that do really well on the platform are workloads that, that need that level of infrastructure characteristics. And it's not a well-known fact, but actually a blockchain platform, um, and all the success IBM's had on blockchain has been running in our cloud on our Z systems over the last two years with 500 plus clients, right? So those are the kind of workloads that benefit from the hardware characteristics as well as you know, the security characteristics. Let's double click on that. So you think blockchain, oftentimes you think about distributed apps, um, you, know, you think about transaction you know, limits, et cetera, et cetera. So what are the attributes of Z that lend itself well to those workloads? Uh, that's a great question. So several attributes, right? Definitely the key protection and the data protection on Z, the, the sheer TPS 
you know, we, it's, it's funny, I was actually with RBC doing a session today and they were talking about the transactions per second they get by just running on Z versus commodity hardware. And they've had tremendous success, right? So those two combined with, you know, our blockchain technology in our cloud runs on something called a secure services container, which is an absolutely locked down container that no one can get access to. And those are the characteristics that if you think about permission blockchain, that's where Z excels. So that's... So, great. one of the discussions we've been having is in a multi-cloud world, I have different skill sets for the different environments. Can you give us a little compare contrast how security fits in Z versus, you know, x86 Linux in, in, in public clouds? And also, how do I as a customer, you know, manage across those environments from a security standpoint? Sure, so a couple points on there, you know, one is, uh, one of the benefits that we have with Z is uh, we control a, a large portion of the stack, right? So we're able to integrate security into you know, multiple layers of the stack. So Rohit mentioned the secure service container and, and th that combines a number of capabilities that we've you know, built in you know, from the hardware, the firmware, the, the, the operating system end to end. So for example, the secure service container uh, by default all of the code and data associated with one of these secure service containers is encrypted. You don't have to do anything. It's, you know, you deploy an application in one of these containers, everything gets encrypted in flight and at rest. And there's no configuration, no setup for that. It happens automatically. We validate, digitally sign and validate all of the firmware, the operating system, the application, the entire package that gets loaded into one of these environments to protect against introducing malware into that environment and Lastly is we block and restrict administrative access to you know, prevent you know, administrators from having uncontrolled access to the file system. So you know, looking at that, right, since we own that stack and we can, really, we can really integrate those security capabilities vertically through that stack to, to give the, the true value you know, and the capabilities that you need in the cloud to protect both the application and the data. And that's always been the strength of, of the mainframe is you, like you said, you, you Security is not a bolt-on. You know, it's designed in from the very beginning. I mean, when I started in the business, whatever, whatever IBM did with 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 the 390 or whatever it was at the time, you're you know, dating, whole you're industry, dating yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But the whole industry would focus on that. And then, I, you know, frankly, IBM in the early 90s kind of lost its way because it had that sort of install base, and it didn't really hey, you know, have to innovate. That's not the case today. Um, you guys, while well, well, you have an install base who eats up every sort of new cycle of Z, you've had to innovate. You've had to really invest in the roadmap and stay current. You know, whether it's, you mentioned blockchain, um, you know, certainly Linux, um, you know, et cetera. Now infusing AI uh, as a service. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the sort of roadmap, you know, that you and your colleagues are, are on, without obviously divulging, you know, futures, but, but there's, a, there's a legacy there that you've, you've invested in and had to keep really current with some of the major industry trends to keep your clients happy. Yeah, and I'll weigh in and then you know, sure. Mike jump in, right? I mean, the legacy of Z has always been scale, performance, hyper security for the most regulated industries, for the most compliant industries, and our biggest enterprises. And that's, that's going to continue. Even mm -hmm. the next generation of Z is going to continue down that theme. Um, we are very focused on making Z part of the cloud. And so there's a breadth of announcements, and I, I know we talked about hyper-protect in the public cloud, but you know, we're also expanding the, the Kubernetes uh, orchestration on-premise with uh, you know, our IBM Cloud private product being supported fully on Linux One and expanding it to Linux workloads and ZOS workloads. And that is, you know, the cloudification of the platform is the, I think, the next big step for us. And, and but, but so what's the real business driver for, for clients there? Is it the, just the notion of pay by the drink and as a service? Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, Mainframe invented virtualization mm -hmm. and, and, you know, simplified management was always a, a key part of it, key tenant. What's the real business driver for people to move to the cloud? I, I mean, in my view, guys, it's, um, it's, the, it's the speed that they need to move at, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you look at why we are built, we're standardizing on PaaS platforms, whether it's on the cloud or, or on premise, you know, the, the teams are constantly getting pushed to move faster. DevOps, now there's a new concept of DevSecOps, right? It's all about speed that's driving the need for the cloudification of the platform. The other reason is, you know, skills. 
right? Can I, can I work with the mainframe in a way that I'm abstracting away the special skills needed, but I could still move with that speed in the DevOps cycle, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's a combination of those both that's really driving this. Mm -hmm. And, and from a security perspective, I think you know, a couple of the key points are um, you know, looking ahead, we're really focused on the data, right? You know, how, do we, how do we allow organizations, because it's going to happen, right? Organizations will need to move data, whether it's temporarily you know, or longer term, they're going to need to move data to the cloud. That's just, it's a fact of life. So how do we leverage and harness the capabilities that we have, that we've been talking about with, with the Z platform to enable clients to securely move their, you know, their application, pieces of applications and, and data to the cloud so they can take advantage of the capabilities that Rohit was doing with, with confidence that their, their data is not going to be compromised. And that includes you know, a data-centric approach to you know, protection of, of data, as well as you know, the, protecting encryption keys and leveraging and, and taking advantage of the, the capabilities that we have on the platform uh, for key protection, which is already a key part of the solution that we're you know, bringing to market today. So the Z customer um, bets his or her business on your platform. I mean, it's embedded, I mean, it's mm -hmm. fundamental. What's the reaction been to HyperProtect, you know, kind of feedback that you've had from from clients, you, you know, you know, everyone wants to be cloud today, right? So <laughs> the reaction is actually being really positive. You know, we've we've been working with our biggest Z clients through what we call the Z Design Council. Um, you know, validating this story because we want to help them on this enterprise out journey, and the reaction has been good. Now it's you know, it really depends on where they are on that cloud journey as well. Right? Some are very, are very much still want to be an on-premise shop and some are aggressively moving to the public cloud. So our goal is really to intercept them wherever they are on that cloud journey. Yeah, well many of them have a cloud mandate, right? So Absolutely. Yeah, well, and, and I, have an, I have clients come up to me on almost a continuous basis when they look at what we, the, the capabilities that we delivered with our, with our Z14 machine and, and the cryptographic you know, horsepower that we have with that machine, you know, they're looking at and saying, hey, how do I how do I harness this as a you know you know crypto as a service for you know for our enterprise, which is you know kind of the the precursor to what we're doing with you know the hyperprotect services. But there there is a a keen interest from organizations to have a a secure performant, scalable, stable environment for cryptographic services because encryption is becoming ubiquitous. So, you know, providing that capability, I think, is, you know, is yeah, significant. Yeah, and, and our goal, like Mike said, is really to make security easy, right? Whether it's, you know, whether it's in the public cloud and, you know, the enterprise developers don't have to worry about it. Can they get the levels of security that they need for their enterprises or their enterprise workloads, but in an easy cloud-native consumption model? Mm. Right, that's, that's really what HyperProtect is. Yeah, I guess so, final question is, what, what's the pricing implications of this new offering and you know, how, do, how do customers get started? Is this ready shipping today? Uh, it's shipping in March. Uh, it's available today, that's the beauty of cloud. Right, we went through what we call the experimental service, it's available in beta today. You could go to our IBM Cloud catalog, access it, get it, try it. All right, uh, give you a, a final word on uh, takeaways you want people to have uh, when it comes to security in the Z space. Yeah, so I think the main thing is that you know Z has a, a very proud tradition of security leadership and innovation, uh, and and what we're bringing to the market here is is just another example of of that security leadership and innovation. All right, well, Michael Rohit, thank you so much for bringing us the thank update. You guys. Congratulations on bringing the product to market. Thank Look you. Forward to attracting yeah, good luck the with updates. it. Thank, thank you. you guys. Thank, thank you guys. so much. All yep. right, uh, for Dave Vellante, I'm Stu Minow, and we'll be back to wrap up our day three of four days live wall-to-wall -wall coverage here from Moscone North. IBM Think 2019, thanks for watching theCUBE.